Hello, one and all. This is my review, reaction, and cut content discussion to that time it reincarnated slime, season three, episode three. And last episode focused mainly on Hinata being ordered not to attack Tempest. So this episode is going to focus more on how Tempest is doing in this moment, how they're using this period of uh, just basically a rest by the chance they can finally rest, recover, and figure out what comes next. I mean, they literally invaded Clayman's domain and took basically everything for themselves. So that's a lot to deal with, especially with all of his, you know, thousands and thousands upon prisoners they took captive. <laughs> Love that. Uh, plus, just figuring out what to do now that Rimuru is a freaking god dang demon lord, ruler of monsters. God, I love this slime. But, all right, let's get started in three, two, one. <laughs> oh, I love that. This is how they're starting with Rimuru getting a whole bunch of cuddles from Shuna. Oh, that's adorable. What a lucky slime he is. Yeah, uh... About Hakuro, uh, basically, he's the only one from the group who couldn't actually teleport, so they kind of left him behind to deal with all the mess and the cleanup and all of that. <laughs> Which, I mean, it's kind of hard for him to say no to that when it's a job that needs to get done. And also, you know, Shuna was the one asking for it, and he loves her like a granddaughter. <laughs> oh, I love these people. Wait. So he went back? That's a... Yeah, in the light novel, he never showed up in the first place. He just stayed there. He didn't have to go back to it because he literally couldn't come back and forth because he couldn't freaking teleport. That's a weird change. <laughs> yeah, so basically, uh, Shuna and Benimaru did the exact same thing. They came back to Tempest and left all the work for their subordinates. <laughs> I mean, I think Alvis and, uh, what was her name, Sofa, whatever, uh, they only kind of have themselves to blame because they intentionally made Benimaru their commander so they could, you know, fight to their heart's content. And as their commander, he basically ordered them to stay behind <laughs> and just deal with all the thousands of prisoners. Oh, I love that. <laughs> yeah, really, they learned from Rimuru. Rimuru is absolutely fantastic at delegating work, giving, you know, the best job to the best people, and leaving very little for himself to actually do. I mean, that isn't a bad system, though, especially for a leader of a nation. Uh, he, you know, delegates work to his subordinates, delegate their work to their subordinates, and that just means more work gets done. Uh, so, he may come up as lazy, but still, good system overall. <laughs> oh yeah, it's particularly seen. Uh, that was when Rimuru told uh, this Kobe, uh, basically one of the lowest ranked monsters in all of Tempest, to deal with all of the trading with the Beast Nation for him. Oh, I forgot about that. That was a hilarious scene. Very interesting callback too, especially to that one. Light Novel just, you know, had uh, Raphael giving him some shade, but here she actually gives examples. It, so Rimuru is drinking tea as a slime. Interesting. And Light Novel he actually says, I can't really drink tea as a slime, so I just kind of, like, enjoy the smell of it. <laughs> Here he's straight up drinking it. I love that. Yeah, that's another really important detail here. I mean, in the world, in our modern-day world, if you capture a bunch of soldiers and you take away their weapons, there's not a whole lot they can do against you. I mean, if you have weapons and they don't, they kind of have to listen to what you say. Whereas, you know, in a world, Tempest, where everyone has superpowers, or all these soldiers have superpowers because they're magic-born, like, ultimate warriors, it's not hard for them to revolt and make a run for it. Or at least, it wouldn't be if it wasn't for good old Benny Morrow. <laughs> yeah, really. I mean, Benny Maru is probably strong enough to be called a demon lord in his own right, so they're not going to oppose him. 
Okay, so this is the big plan moving forward. Uh, Tempest has basically become a trade school, a place where people can learn skills, uh, you know, advance themselves, and then go on and spread those skills elsewhere. Right now, the Beast Nation people, they're coming to Tempest so they can learn how to do all the amazing things that people of Tempest can do, and then once the Beast Nation, or I guess, Malim slash Frey slash Carrion's new nation gets built back up, they'll be able to go there and apply those skills uh, to the reconstruction effort. <laughs> yep, that's the power of Demon Lord. You want to build a new capital? Sure, why not? I mean, I think only Malim would be crazy enough to actually order that, but yeah, she has the authority to do so. <laughs> actually, there's <laughs> a really interesting line right here in the light novel where Rumoru says, Hey, Tamara, his co-worker from his past life, Remember me, your boss, who had to explain everything to you 50 times, and you still couldn't do it? Right? Uh, yeah, I have this entire horde of monsters who do better work than you. <laughs> oh, the shade. Absolutely love that sassy Romero. Fifteen. Oh, good lord. Those things actually are beautiful. Uh, in the light novel, he describes like, you know, artistic pieces of work, whatever, uh, but wow, those are actually fantastic. I will say that uh, the Dwarvena Dwarvenation can only actually make one of these per month. That is how hard it is to craft these things. <laughs> and Rimuru right now has 1,500, uh, yeah, 1,500, meaning he has 10% of the total supply of stellar coins in the entire world. That's like, I think, $1.5 billion right there? Yeah, $1.5 billion sitting on his desk. <laughs> oh, that is insane. <laughs> yeah, so uh, basically the royals, the king is like, alright, just take all of my money because I mean, if you don't, the nobles are going to take it anyway. At least this way I can say, I gave everything I had for the people. Don't you see how much I'm working for you? <laughs> Love it. Okay, I mean, that's the whole point of all of this, to trigger a civil war, to basically get the people fighting, so Yom come in and, you know, be the big hero and become king, even though he's functionally literate. Yeah, Xi'an is so confused about all of this, and it's like, uh, something is happening. I don't know what it is, but I should try and pay attention. Hey, I wonder why I should cook for dinner tonight. <laughs> oh, this poor girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. Like I said, 1.5 billion dollars are now in their coffers. And it's like Tempest was really strapped for cash before this, but now they are just literally swimming in it. <laughs> they can do whatever the freak they want. They could probably buy the nation of Blumen with that much money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. Uh, Diablo fighting is terrifying. Overwhelmingly terrifying. I mean, I think even more, th yeah, probably more than Benny Morrow. I think in terms of magicals, he's weaker than Benny Morrow. But in terms of actual skill, uh, there is nobody in Tempest who could actually stop him. And if he went, you know, on the battlefield, it would be a complete and utter bloodbath. Just com horrors beyond human imagination. <laughs> Again. <laughs> uh, oh god, above. Yes, yes you have. And also, you've just been so confused this entire conversation. Remember, was like, you can learn something from this. And Xion's like, what are we talking about? <laughs> Yeah, the church, unsurprisingly, has some questions, like, 
hey, we gave you a bunch of soldiers and you invaded this nation of monsters and now they're all dead and apparently your actions caused our arch enemy, the Storm Dragon, to get revived. So, uh, what's up with that? <laughs> and they're basically ordering to come back and explain what the freak happened. <laughs> Yeah, there's really no point lying to them because, I mean, they've been monitoring Veldor. They have probably a pretty idea of what's going on with him, and they could definitely see some huge lies in Rahim's story. Honestly, the story itself makes no sense to anyone who actually understands how seals like that really work. So it's better just to be fully honest with them, say, hey, listen, uh, you guys, Falmouth, you attacked us, we defend ourselves. But we don't want any more trouble, we don't want to make war with humanity, so let's just let bygones be guy bygones and try to ignore each other moving forward. <laughs> yeah, so just like Benny Maru gave them the hard work, they delegated the hard the even harder work to Phobio. <laughs> because he's the weakest of the bunch. You're learning. You're really learning from Rimuru. Good for you. <laughs> God, poor Phobio. I mean, this entire series is literally just him getting kicked around again and again and again. Good lord. Temporary housing. I mean, rather than light novel, I thought like, oh, this is gonna be like a tent city, something very simple, something bare bones. This is like small town America. I mean, they, you know, squished a bit closer together, but still, those are beautiful homes. I'd love to live in a home like that. I'm not particularly fond of stairs the entryway, but other than that, I would love to live in a home like that. Yeah, you really can't compare yourself to Sir Midray when this dude literally fights toe to toe with freaking Malim, the arguably strongest demon lord. That dude is an absolute beast. <laughs> okay, uh, before I get to this letter, the thing I really love is that this letter is actually shown in the light novel. Like, one of the few illustrations from this volume is literally Malim's handwritten note. For one thing, her handwriting was way messier than this, but for another, I have never seen a handwritten note in any illustration from any series I've ever read. So that was, that was cool. That was honestly a really cool detail. And what this basically says is, hey, listen, my people, Father Midray, he doesn't actually believe in cooking food, like, at all. So he basically just feeds me raw vegetables 24-7, and I eat them because, you know, it's a polite thing to do. You can't refuse food, especially for people who are, you know, worshipping you. But I hate it. I hate it so much, I want to die. So please give him some cooking lessons. <laughs> oh, I love you, Malim. I absolutely love you. <laughs> <laughs> God, the animation here of Malim just flying around. It really adds some life, just this letter being read. God, and the desperation in her voice. Please, please, please. I mean, like I said, she really hates raw vegetables. In fact, if I remember correctly, I think uh, when she was tricking Clayman, pretending to be like... I am your puppet. I will do whatever you say. She was actually like chewing on cabbage or something just to keep this blank expression on her face. <laughs> yeah, I mean, let's not forget the uh, dragon nudes, Gabby and the rest of them. They are still, in fact, lizards, so they still kind of have lizard taste buds. Though it's also said that after they evolved, uh, from wherever they were into what they currently are, uh, they were real lizard men, and they, since they evolved into dragon news, they have actually developed better taste buds, and they can actually enjoy a wider range of foods than they could when they were lizard men. <laughs> oh, Papa Geld, uh, he is struggling. He is really struggling here. Oh god, I love this character so much. Especially, seriously, if anyone has not watched Slime Diaries, you have to watch it. He's, Geld is like the world's greatest father in that series. It's just so freaking adorable. 
that's a great way to start a conversation. This is literally the... They're reusing shots. This was the same shot we saw before. The same background of characters. That's a little bit lazy. Hmm. I mean, yeah, let me double check that. Oh, it's the exact same shots. Even with Geld in front of it. Interesting. Uh, that's good. That's honestly a little bit concerning right there. And the flashback wasn't necessary. It could have just, you know, been talking. Yeah, so... Geld is really struggling here because, you know, when he's a great leader. He manages the High Orcs perfectly. But the High Orcs all have thought communication, as I think all monsters do. Uh, Majins, Magic Born, Lycanthropes, uh, they don't have that. Meaning Geld actually needs to say the commands out loud and explain them in a way where everyone can understand them. Uh... Which he is not great at, because he never really needed to be great at that. He's never really needed to be a speaker, because he always just basically, basically just project his thoughts, basically project his ideal version of how things are supposed to get done directly in people's minds. Now he can't do that, and he's just struggling so much. It also doesn't help that he's dealing with, you know, prisoners of war who don't really want to work all that much, since they figure they'll just be killed anyway once the job is done. <laughs> yes, this calls for drinks. <laughs> I mean, remember who says it's the job of Superior to cheer up his co worker, to cheer up his subordinate after a long day, and that's exactly what he's doing. If he was still back in Japan and his subordinate came in and was complaining about his problems, Rimuru would take him out for drinks. I love that this series is still basically about Rimuru using his office worker skills to deal with all the problems of Tempest. It's just so funny. <laughs> and he's so happy. He's so happy to be brought out with Rimuru. For his, basically his god to say, hey, let's hang out tonight. <laughs> oh, and they took him to the uh, Dryad Bar. Have we actually seen this in uh, this series yet? I know we've seen it in Slime Diaries, but... I'm trying to remember if this is actually shown in the main series. Also, does Rimuru have braided hair? Uh, yeah, his hair is actually in a braid. That's an interesting choice right there. Curious. Also, Dryad, we didn't actually see any of the Dryad Bar in the light novel. It was just said, I went to the Dryad Bar and he whined out his problems all night to me. I mean, that's another issue right there, the fact that Geld is a perfectionist. He wants everything to be done, he wants everything to be done exactly right, especially because he owes so much to Rimuru. He should have been killed. He absolutely should have been killed for all the massive crimes he and the orcs committed, but instead Rimuru decided to, you know, save him, decided to bring him in, decided to give him actual work, and decided to make sure that all of his people were fed and would never have to go hungry again. He is overwhelmingly grateful and wants to pay back, and now that he's failing, he feels, well, like a failure. <laughs> Yeah, Rimuru needs a way to justify him being out drinking all night. Though it's not much justification when he can't even get drunk, so there's really no consequences to drinking. And he also doesn't sleep, so it's not like there's anything else he could be doing, you know, all night long. Now that right there is a very big deal because they didn't just call up Tempest and be like, "Hey, we want to, we want to form formal relations with you." They announced this to the world, "Hey, we want to form formal relationships with Tempest." Which I mean, combine that with Blumind and the Dwarven Kingdom both saying, "Hey, he's our guy." Everyone else is going to be very, very hesitant to actually cause any issues with Tempest. I mean, even the church can't really act if there's that many big factors supporting the nation. Actually saying it is a real nation and you shouldn't attack it. And of course, they're reusing the exact same map asset we've seen literally every time we've ever seen a map. 
<laughs> also, another fun fact about the series, when Mimro first asked for a map during the uh, orc invasion thing, everyone kind of looked at him like, what's a map? Even the dwarves are only like fairly uh, somewhat aware of it because maps are a very rare thing in this world. For one thing, you know, monsters can just thought communicate to figure out exactly where they are supposed to be, where certain things are. And for humans, maps are considered basically uh, elements of warfare. So therefore, you know, nobody except the high nobility can actually see them. <laughs> It's not like they could really say no to that. Say no to supporting Tempest and allowing the highway to go through their land. Not really through their land, but near their land. <laughs> oh, the Kusha Mountains. Oh, it's gonna be fun. This is honestly one of the best scenes of this entire series. Not this episode, but... Oh, I cannot wait for that. I cannot wait for that. Ah, the Tengu. Yeah, so basically, Rimuru wants to build his uh, highway, not necessarily in the Tengu land, but close enough to it where he wants to make sure they're not going to cause any problems, they're not, they're not going to get angry about a highway and start attacking the people who go by it. So he needs to send out a delegation basically like, hey, you cool with this? Yeah, it's very important. Even the demon lord, Frey, was not actually able to beat them back. And, you know, that was the whole thing with her. <laughs> uh, well, yes, that would be terrifying if the freaking demon lord showed up. I mean, imagine if the president of a nation showed up at your job to ask for your help on something. <laughs> You'd panic. Oh, and Benny Maru, this is a job you might not want to sign up for. <laughs> Okay, I mean, this line was in the light novel. I'm pretty sure Benny Mara said, I'll go with Albus, not just I'll go. And then Shuna's like, well, I'm sure Albus is coming with you. <laughs> That's kind of weird. But also, you know, definitely little sister energy right there. <laughs> You're not volunteering to have a tryst with her, are you? <laughs> oh, the shade. <laughs> <laughs> no, there, there's nothing to misunderstand. That is very clearly what she is saying in this moment. Oh, is, is she jealous? Is she actually jealous that her brother's dating someone? <laughs> oh, that's precious. <laughs> okay, yeah, Shuna is definitely blowing things out of portion here. Not only really saying that Benny Maru is already in love with Albus, but that this was a honey trap and she's gonna abandon and he's gonna abandon their nation and go move in with her. <laughs> There's so much wrong with this, and just so he's literally sweating like I'm so glad they're not talking about me. <laughs> you know, one of the funniest things about this scene is the fact that Rimuru actually complains that, you know, oh my god, I can't believe Benny Maru got a girlfriend before me, while he's sitting in his special slime seat that is literally how he describes Xion's lap. <laughs> his special slime seat. My man, you have no right to complain. You literally have at least two girls, probably way more, who are fawning all over you. Do I need to remind you about how this episode started? <laughs> Seriously, man, you got the girls already. Don't be jealous. I mean, not a bad theory. I mean, a lot of the Bob's riches came from his own, you know, supporters, Yukio, the uh, gestures, all that. Uh, but also, you know, ancient ruins are incredibly valuable. In fact, the uh, full potions Rimuru creates right now, in the past, you could only actually find them in ancient, in ancient ruins. 
Uh, this isn't necessarily the fact that the ancients were so much more powerful than we are today, but also the fact that in order for equipment, potions, really anything to evolve, it needs a lot of time and a lot of magicules. So if you leave a potion out in an area with a relatively high magical count for long enough, it'll eventually evolve into a high potion. Same with rare equipment, swords, all that stuff. The longer it's around, and the longer it's surrounded by magicules, it'll eventually evolve into something incredibly powerful. <laughs> As some of you already know, he was promoted a freaking year ago, a month ago, I mean. They've already heard. This isn't news to anyone. Oh, God, the blushing. The blushing as they cheer for him. Though, gotta say, that is a really cool chair right there. If that was the special slime seat Rimmer was referring to, yeah, I understand. Oh, I love that chair. And of course, Brother Warrior is sitting there reading comic books because, of course, he is. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for the goblins, let's not forget, remember we met them, I think, uh, yeah, two years ago. It's been about two years since he first met them in their small little wooden shacks. And since then, he's literally built them up into a massive nation and himself into a demon lord. They all have the protection of a freaking demon lord right now. <laughs> yes, I didn't mention this, but a month ago, I was declared ruler over this entire forest. You know, in case that's relevant. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and that is very, very relevant, and Rimuru just didn't freaking realize it. Yeah, so basically Rimuru owns, like, the western half of the forest of Jura, but there's a giant river cutting through it that the Dryads never crossed, so therefore he doesn't technically own that land, or at least he didn't, until he became the ruler of the entire forest, which is a truly massive plot of land, by the way. And this also basically means everything in the forest belongs to him. So if a dwarf went into the forest, cut down some trees, and went back to sell them as lumber, they would technically be stealing from Rimuru. They would technically be stealing from Rimuru and would need his permission to do so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so basically anyone in the forest who doesn't have this permission explicitly is intruding on his property, is basically declaring themselves an enemy of the demon lord, which, yeah, don't do that. That's a very bad idea. <laughs> I mean, also, that's also another interesting point. On the other hand, uh, if you do go to Rimuru and say, may I live here, and he says yes, then you are technically under the protection of the Demon Lord, and nobody can mess with you. If anybody tries to attack you, you can basically just go to Rimuru and say, hey, these guys are attacking me, and he'll probably send support. <laughs> Which, you know, even if he just sends Gabiru, or not Gabiru, uh, Gopta, that's basically going to solve all your problems right there. How? You and your father aren't speaking right now. That was a big thing. I mean, if you said my sister told my, our father about your ascension, that'd be one thing, but that was the whole thing, you know? Uh, Gabiru was literally kicked out of his own kingdom for getting so many people killed and starting a goddamn rebellion. He told Shion about it, and she didn't feel the need to tell you about it. <laughs> that feels like kind of a failure as a secretary if you don't tell your boss about an important appointment coming up. Oh, oh there's some interesting faces here. I mean, right there we have the Tengu. Oh, the Rabbit Men! That's, uh, what's his name? Karn! Oh my god, I want to see him. Uh, so, that's like a whole spin-off series I'm going to talk about when he actually shows up down the road, but that's going to be so amazing. <laughs> oh god, there's so many faces there. Oh, these two! Uh, what's his name? Apito and Zenark? Zen Zenigo? Zenitz? Something like that. Uh, those are basically the insects that Rimuru saved. Uh, we didn't actually see that. He was supposed to save them, like, the first season from... Oh, actually, 
I think we might have seen them in the second season. Uh, anyway, Rimuru saved them and uh, healed them and named them, and now they deliver honey to him. <laughs> oh, this is gonna be a very, very big idea. Yeah. Let's just bring all of these monster na monster villages, monster tribes together in Tempest at one point. Even though a lot of them don't actually like one another, I mean, really, what could go wrong? <laughs> uh, so basically, this is going to be a festival to both announce himself as a demon lord and also to say, hey, you, you see the city? You like this city? Come work in this city! You get all these amenities! <laughs> oh, I love it. You are very much underestimating what's involved in holding a big festival if you think planning it is going to be, you know, kicking back and taking it easy. That's an interesting spot to end. There's supposed to be... Uh, I guess the meeting isn't over yet, because there's still supposed to be more of the Geld conversation. i curious about that. Uh, oh, let's see what they say. What's the next episode called? Uh, each respective role. Each respective roles. That feels... It definitely feels like a typo right there, but alright, so... I guess we're going to keep going on with this meeting into the next episode. So things are definitely going a bit slower than I expected. I figured they'd wrap up this meeting this episode and next episode would be the next chapter of the light novel, but I guess not. Interesting. Uh, Alright, so main focus this was basically just cleaning up, figuring out what's going on, and deciding where to go moving forward. Uh, Benimaru is going to go check on the Tengu. Soe's investigating the highway. Uh, Geld is working on working with the villagers, prisoners, with, who's working with the prisoners of war and the Bisketeers to build up, uh, you know, a, a new nation to clear out land so that Malim's new capital can get built. Everybody has a job to do. Huzzah! On top of all of that, Rimuru decided to hold a massive festival to welcome everyone and announce himself as a true demon lord. <laughs> oh, that's gonna be fun. Honestly, that is... One of my least favorite parts of the light novel, though I think that's because it just, it's literally two separate volumes, the setup and the actual festival, and that just meant like literally a year of waiting and to actually get to the interesting parts of it, which I very much did not like. <laughs> though as a whole, the festival is amazing, I think it's going to be an absolute fantastic way to end the season. I, mean, I was hoping they'd go into the next volume after that, but... That doesn't seem to be the case right now. But anyway, though, please leave me think down below. What do you think is going to happen in this massive festival? Uh, what do you think of Benimaru and Albus together? What do you think is going to happen when they all meet the Tengu? Dun dun dun! And how is the world going to react from Rue announcing he's holding a giant, massive festival to declare himself a true demon lord? Let me know what you think about all this down below. And until next time, peace!